SCADA or technical support troubleshooting tips. One of the biggest challenges for the aspiring SCADA or technical support has little to do with the details of programming or the software that he or she is using. As a SCADA engineer or SCADA or technical support even, you'd be asked with understanding and solving problems that are on a regular basis, regardless of the specific technologies you use. Then, strong problem-solving ability is critical. And while your problem-solving skills will certainly develop naturally as you encounter more issues on a daily basis, it's worth being a bit more intentional and think about problem solving strategies in general. In this presentation, I'm going to share some common problem solving strategies and adapt them to the life of a SCADA or technical support personnel. If you find this video interesting, helpful, or you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. This slide will give us an overview of the topics that I'll share with you and will act as your guide in troubleshooting. First off, the importance of understanding the problem, then starting with the basics, the value of reading and checking log files, having a good OSI layer knowledge, using the right tools, and how documentation helps, then the value of having a knowledge base, the significance of escalations, collaboration, and lastly, the noteworthiness of a solid root cause analysis. Understanding the problem. When someone presents you with a problem, it can be tempting to dive right in and start solving. But we, before we can solve a problem, we need to know exactly what the problem is. And we should put a good amount of thinking and resources into understanding it. It's always better to take a step back and make sure you understand the task ahead of you. And because today's problems are so complex, we know they can't be solved unless by being broken down into specific components. Asking questions before you start to solve the problem demonstrates that you are taking a thoughtful approach. Here are some guide questions. Can I restate the problem in my own words? What are the inputs that go into the problem? What are the outputs that should come from the solutions to the problem? Can the outputs be determined from the inputs? How should I label the important pieces of data that are part of the problem? Asking all these questions to yourself may seem like a lot, but like any other skill, problem solving requires practice to develop. Over time, if you ask these questions to yourself repeatedly, you'll begin to internalize them. Eventually, they'll just become a natural checklist that you go through almost without thinking about it. Start off with the basics and categorize your issues into two. When we talk about software related issues, use the three R's, reboot, reset, or restart. The answer is reasonably simple. In basic terms, a reboot wipes the temporarily stored data from the computer. This will often include whatever is causing the problem as rebooting clears everything, free up your system memory, your cache, your processes, along with underlying or related services. Shutting down and restarting returns the computer to a clean state. Restarting an electronic device gives it a fresh state and reinitializes the device, resetting it back to the initial state. Take note, personally, I do not recommend reinstallation of SCADA softwares unless you have a backup of your config files, 
certificates for those U U OPC UA connections, licenses for those proprietary software, links, version compatibilities, as well as codes, and those applications that were installed during commissioning or the implementation stage of the project. On the hardware side, another set of three R's, replug, reseed, and re-terminate. Along those lines, you need to consider doing visual inspection, line cabling tracing, and most importantly, continuity testing. Using other physical tools like multimeters for copper wires or cables, LAN or network cable testers for Ethernet cabling systems, or reflectometers and fiber optic toolkits if you're dealing with fiber optic cablings and networks, since that's the only way to make sure that each one is good before you replug, reseed, or if there is a need to re-terminate. This can be done if you're on site or on front of those equipments, or if you're working remotely with a technician or personnel out in the field, make sure to evaluate and work with them and execute these lines or cable checks. Logs are your best friend. Read the logs. It's always a good practice to check on log files. Log files are automatically created to store a record of all events from your application. It keeps track of every event that happens in your application from the minute you start running it to the second you stop it. When you open a log file, it looks intimidating. It has thousands of lines and it looks very technical. Most of the stuff in the logs won't matter to you. You just need to know what you're looking for. The majority of the time, you'll be checking your logs for errors and occasional warnings. Usually when you'll want to do a search for the word error when opening your logs. When you do, pay attention to the timestamp next to the error. You want to make sure you're looking at the most recent error that has been recorded. Also make sure you have your logs configured in the beginning of the project. Some stuff gets recorded automatically, but if you want to look out for specific errors, you'll have to do some configuration changes. Logging levels refer to the type of severity written in the log file. The verbose level logs on the left, or say all, logs a message for both the activity start and end, plus the values of the variables and arguments that are used and this is the highest among the levels. On the far left, off means logging is not enabled. Know your OSI layers. The Open Systems Interconnection, or simply OSI, is a model that is conceptually framework used to describe the functions of a network system or simply describes seven layers that computer system uses to communicate over a network. It will help you visualize and communicate how network operates and helps you isolate and troubleshoot networking problems. For you to be an effective and efficient SCADA or technical support member, you must have a solid understanding of the OSI layer. have the right tools for the right job. What do I mean by tools? Those are devices, equipments, mechanism, resources, or even applications, anything that is being utilized during the job to assist you in completing your task. Like any other roles, having the right set of tools is imperative to successful completion of the task in hand. This goes hand in hand with the basic discussion we had earlier, but would focus on the software side, given that the physical or hardware side 
are provided or proved to be good and working. Network access layer. These are mainly switch port and IP address management software that has the ability to scan network devices and views details like IP addresses, subnet, subnet associated blocks, monitor network traffic, and other information relevant to them. Operating system layer, these involve software that enables you to view and interact with the actual set of data that is being presented. Example of those are proprietary softwares that equipment manufacturers provide once you purchase their products or simply OEM software. And it's a phrase that refers to software that is sold to the computer builders and hardware manufacturers. The third party software that comes with your meters, PLCs, data loggers, relays, transformers are example of OEM softwares. Document properly. For a SCADA or technical support, reliable documentation is a must. The presence of documentation helps keep track of all aspects of your troubleshooting. These involves record keeping of documents like data sheets, product specifications, as built drawings, wiring diagrams, etc. During the actual problem definition, a record of events should be documented. Things that should be specified there are the application name or version, server name, network details, URL, operating systems, user account information, point of contact, the actual steps that you've taken, valuable screenshots, as well as the resolution details. Building your own knowledge base. A knowledge base is a centralized online database for information of a product, service, subject, or a topic. It provides support for collection, organization, recovery, and sharing of knowledge for customers and employees. Data can be stored in the knowledge base about how a new product or a process will work. This should include how to, troubleshooting steps, flowcharts, tutorials, FAQs, and application installations. Building and maintaining a comprehensive or consistent knowledge base is an effective way of providing high quality post-sale service to your customers. It can significantly reduce the amount of phone calls your customers have to make to find answers to their problems. Effective escalations. Sending an escalation doesn't necessarily mean that you failed at doing your job or incapable of solving your problems. An effective escalation is also not throwing your counterparts under the bus. Instead, it is a powerful mechanism to raise awareness on critical issues and ask for help to unblock yourself to serve your customers. For you to be able to escalate effectively, you need to do your diligence first in terms of executing the previous steps like checking the logs, using the right tools, and properly documenting each step of your troubleshooting. Then specify or set out what work has already been undertaken. Make sure your escalation is structured and action-oriented that would help describe the impact or severity. Categorize the problem and find the right point of contact for your escalation. And lastly, provide a balanced view of the issue. Separate the facts from the emotions in an escalation. On this slide, we will discuss briefly the difference between swarming and tiered support. Tiered support on the left is the most classic and widespread support structure. 
and work strictly on an escalation principle. Whereas you have your tier one that deals with the most basic of issues and questions, usually the most common recurring and easily resolved problems people have. Tier two deals with any issues that agents in tier one aren't able to handle themselves. And tier three are the ones that touches the most technical or complicated issues that requires the highest level of attention and expertise. This warming method on the other hand, what we have on the right, is a fairly unstructured method, requires training and reorganization of most support teams. This is to ensure that swarmings or the swarms on duty are empowered and qualified as a whole to deal with all level of issues. Swarming is being called the new and smart way, but if you're not staffed properly, this would mean that high qualified staff are being constantly distracted by very simple issues that could be solved by a support generalist. At the end of the day, deciding on which model you should use depends on your team, your company, your customers, and which metrics you'd consider most important. Root cause analysis is a process to help people understand the real causes behind the problem in order for them to learn why the problem arose in the first place. On the management level, if issues are frequently being escalated or several of incidents has been occurring based on your compiled data, we need to dig deeper using different analysis techniques to collect data, apply associated tools and specific set of steps to find the primary cause of the problem. From there, you can easily form an action plan that would enable you and your team to identify the contributing factors of your problem in order to prevent it from occurring again. Remember, if you only fix the symptoms, those are what you can see on the surface, the problem will almost certainly return and needs fixing over and over again. This is where you need to come up with a solid root cause analysis. If you find this video interesting, helpful, or you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.